What's up, guys? It's the AM Podcast. What's going on, guys? Welcome to episode three. I'm Andrew. I am Michael. Today, we're going to be talking about college basketball favorites for the national championship. And we're going to be talking about some breaking news coming out of the NFL. Carson Wentz got traded to the Indianapolis Colts. <laughs> Thank God it's not Chicago. Thank God it's not <laughs> Chicago. Dude, Wait. the Colts got away with just a second round pick and then made another second next year that could turn into a first. I don't yeah. know the rules on that. Yeah. I think that's a little bit too much for Carson Wentz. He deserves, like, half a bag of Lay's. <laughs> Carson Wentz is a guy that I feel like a lot of people still want to have belief in, yeah. even though the belief should not be there. Exactly. He had one good... He had, he had half a good season. Yeah, he's not going to be the same after... What was it? It was, it was two injuries now, yeah. right? Yeah. Two major injuries that had him out for a significant amount of time. And he just looked terrible last year. Yeah. And, you know, not to mention, you know... The Colts needed a quarterback, obviously, but, you know, they just keep going from old guys to old guys. I think Carson Wentz is 27, 28. Yeah, that's Not true. That but bad. I think his injuries make him 35. Can make him, can make him about, yeah. It's basically him... Phillip Rivers again. Yeah, that's very true. They're just going to lose in the divisional playoffs. Yeah. So, like. I mean, was it was Darius Leonard, or was it Leonard? It was Darius no, Leonard that Dar- said that. Darius Leonard. I don't who, care how big your name is. Yeah. We just want people to come and play and yeah. work hard. Mm-hmm. And, you know, if they saw something in Carson Wentz, that I'm, thank God the Bears didn't. Yeah. <laughs> so let's get Mac Jones, Chicago. So the <laughs> thing that I was thinking about was you got Stafford getting traded for two first-round picks and a young quarterback. Yeah. And then you got Carson Wentz. He's from the same draft class as Jared Goff, which is now interesting to think about that number one and two picks got traded. Right. What is Deshaun Watson's value? <laughs> well, it has to be enormous. It yeah, has to it be. Really you, you literally just have to give up your entire team for Deshaun. Like, I, I don't know. I mean, well, the Texans did say that they're not interested in trades unless a team offers, you know, two Mount Everest starters or something. And, yeah. uh, and two first-round picks. And yeah. a, a ticket to Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory. Yeah, exactly. It's insane. Well, college basketball. College is basketball. In full swing. And the NFL is not, sadly. But college basketball is one of my favorite sports to watch. Yeah, yeah. I agreed. And I, I cannot watch NBA. I have to watch college basketball. Jalen Johnson of Duke said he was taking the rest of the season off. Yeah. He just quit on that team. He did. He did. Just because they're not good. And because and he didn't start anymore. Yeah. Why did he get benched? Because he plays terribly. Yeah. <laughs> He's, he, he was a great high school player. Yeah. He's terrible in college. Yeah. And he's still like a top 10 draft prospect. Right. And well, I wanted the Bulls to get him. Would, would the Bulls have... I mean, the Bulls are always going to have that middle pick, so... You mean number seven? Yeah, number yeah. seven to, like, 11. That's I mean, they, they had four last year. Patrick Williams is playing good. Yeah, Patrick Williams is playing good. But we're not going to get too far into yeah. that. Jalen Suggs of Gonzaga is, is, a, is a stud. Is a, he's a monster. He's a stud. He's making a case for, to be the number one overall pick. Right. It's it's between him, Cade Cunningham out of Oklahoma State, yeah, obviously. and Jalen Green, who's in the NBA G League. Right. And I think that Greg Brown from Texas has a good shot, too. Yeah. Those four people are the only people. Even though you could put, like, Jonathan Kaminga there, yeah. if you know who that is. Yeah. But, like, I wouldn't. Or Evan Mobley out of USC. Yeah. Right right now, as it stands, who would be your favorite to win the national championship? You know what? I'll, t- I'll tell you mine after. You, after you say People it. are going to get mad at me for this one. Okay, okay. But I'm staying in state. Staying in state. I think that, I think that <laughs> Illinois. <laughs> yes, Illinois sir. has a good shot. Yes, sir. Their big men are amazing. Yes, they are. Kofi Coburn, Ayo DeSumo. They're so fun to say. Yes, Adam Miller, Dude. the freshman. Like, true freshman who was just, who came out just running. I mean, he, he came out like out of the gates out of the Kentucky Derby. <laughs> came out like Usain Bolt in 2016. Yeah. So I would say my favorite right now, if I had to choose one, because there's probably three or four in my head. If I had to choose one, I have to give it to Baylor. Baylor is Baylor's always been I, like that three seed team, and they're finally yeah. going up. Yeah, I, I have to give it to Baylor because they were strong last year. They were the number one. I mean, they were the number one. I don't know the exact stat off the top of my head, but I know they were number one for a 
large number of weeks. Yeah. And no one was coming after him. And then, I mean, they were looking like Easy they were going to they were going to win in 2020. Yeah. But now they come back right away. And even Illinois, I thought Illinois was going to fall off this year only because I thought they were going to lose everyone to the draft, but then yeah. everyone stayed. So then now they're even better than they were last year. And I feel like that is what's hurting those teams like Duke, Kentucky, North Carolina, yeah, is yeah. that these people are finally staying. Yeah. And they're playing basketball in college for two to two, three years. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I feel like at this point, where college basketball stands and where the NBA is going with the one-and-done rule being eliminated, yeah. you're either going to college until yeah. you're a junior, mm-hmm. or you're not going at all. Yeah, and I think the one-and-done being eliminated is really going to give us a lot better competition. It will. Because this year, if we're not if we're not going to be seeing Duke, Kentucky, North Carolina, North Carolina most likely, or maybe we're going to see North Carolina as like an 11 seed, someone we've never seen them before. If we're not going to see any of those teams, there's still a lot of brand names like Gonzaga and, you know, but and Florida State or whatever. But, you know, I think this is going to be a lot more competitive. I mean, it's it's fun to watch every year, and I think it'll be even better this year. This is one year that I don't think anyone will be confident having a perfect bracket. Yeah, I agree with that. Nobody can do I think, their I think bias. everyone will think that they have a perfect bracket. But... <laughs> like, no, you don't. No. You, you'll, you'll never have a perfect bracket. And yeah. if you think you will, you're delusional. Yeah. What are your thoughts on the Big Ten this year in the college Big basketball? Ten? What happened to Iowa? <laughs> What is Luca Garza doing out there? Well, I mean, they did just beat Michigan State by thirty about a week. Michigan State, a couple weeks ago. Like, they're just waiting for Amani Bates to come in two years. Yeah, they're. Uh, that's true, but they're five hundred. Ah, <laughs> Michigan's <laughs> a basketball school now. Yeah, that's, that's true. Sad to see. That's true. I mean, the Big Ten has the three, four, and five top 25 yeah. and and a few more scattered throughout i think maybe purdue's like ohio 24 State's ohio somewhere. state yeah. yeah that's so weird because it used to just be acc's basketball acc big 12 acc big 12 and yeah. then obviously the kentucky and the sec right and like auburn coming on the last couple of years right yeah. but that doesn't exist anymore no the only team like that's a mainstay is gonzaga yeah mm-hmm. which i don't understand what is it about gonzaga that people like for people like going to play basketball yeah. there, like like why, <laughs> why Gonzaga? You know what's funny? I feel like I've never heard. Does Gonzaga? They even have a football. They team? They don't. They do they don't not have. have a, they do not have a football team. They are all basketball. <laughs> well, you go there for one reason and one reason only, and that's to lose in the Elite Eight. <laughs> <laughs> and it's definitely not to party. No, <laughs> that's like such an interesting. Um, yesterday, number one high school prospect, Amari Bailey. Committed to hometown UCLA. Yeah. And I did not know Jalen Hands. Is that the Han- kid with the braces? Yeah. <laughs> I did not know Jalen Hands was still in college. Jalen where? UCLA. Okay. He, like, he's been there for, like, 27 years, I swear yeah, to God. Okay, he's yeah. like Aaron Kraft on Ohio State in the early 2000s. Yeah. And I don't know. Like, I, I do you like what's happening with people staying homegrown or, like, these kids, like, starting to commit to HBCUs? <laughs> I think it's a good thing. You know what? You know what was really interesting about that was the is it like Jackson State? Yeah. That like Deion Sanders is like that go. And I'm seeing like a lot of big prospects are putting that like on their like one of their final yeah. eight. Like just because that could be like I've never heard of this school, but then you know, is it Deion Sanders? That's, yes, yeah, Deion Sanders. Yeah, yeah, that he's coaching. Or like, do you know who Mikey Williams is? Yeah, I do. He's looking at going to HBCU. Yeah. It like so is um Don Maker's younger brother Maker Maker. Yeah, <laughs> that's a that's a tongue twister. <laughs> but it's like great to see this happening, not only for the bla- African American community. That's very true. But also just for college basketball in general. Yeah, agreed. Because C- everyone's not going to Duke or Kentucky anymore. Right, right. So then, so then going back to your point about staying homegrown, if you can't go to a Kansas or a Duke, then you know you might just have to go to like in Illinois State and just light it up. You know, like <laughs> like like James Robinson in, at ISU in football. Yeah, he's like it's it's an interesting. I mean, I don't, he wasn't a hometown. No, he's from Mississippi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's an interesting thing to see how basketball is starting to work now. Zaire Wade, Dwayne Wade's kid, yeah, probably going to DePaul. Wow, that's I didn't know that. That's a Chicago thing. Does, like, Dwayne, does Dwayne Wade? They live in Chicago. Or Dwayne they live was in, born here. They they still live here though. I don't know. Oh. But probably not because taxes. But we're not going to get into that. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's just really cool to see all these like 
kids that are our age, which is crazy to think about. Right, that's very true. Going to these schools that aren't coached by Calipari, Izzo, or yeah, Mike. That's true. I'm not going to try to say Coach K's last name. <laughs> all right, I believe that is all the time we have for today. Thanks for tuning in to Episode 3. Catch us Episode 4 sometime next week. This has been the AM Podcast on the Blueprint News Network. See ya.